Okay, pretty. Maybe we should get started, and uh, then if people are late, they'll just catch up. All right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, please. Okay, so hi everyone. Uh, thanks for joining. We're super excited to host our first uh, webinar between USI and Astel Flash together. Um, we are going to talk today about the EPS in the EV market. So EPS stands for Electronic Packaging Services. Uh, and thanks for uh, waking up early in Europe and staying late in uh, Asia. Uh, so our agenda today, um, we're going to get uh, started with a very quick introduction of the market overview. It will be introduced by, by Jay. Um, then we're uh, going to talk about the main topic, which is the EPS services in the EV and what does it mean for tomorrow? And uh, we're gonna talk after that about a complete EMS solution uh, that USI and Astel Flash are offering today. So how uh, we are completing each other now with a lot of a wider range of services and it's a one-stop solution. And we're gonna be very happy to answer any question you have at the end. Uh, so you have a, a small chat box. Do, do not hesitate to ask any question you may have and we're gonna just treat everything at the end. So first, uh, I would like to introduce you to Jay. Jay has joined USTI in 2021, but he has more than 10 years of experience in the semiconductor industry. Um, and he's specializing right now in all market analysis, business development and strategy planning. He has a very strong focus on power modules, automotive electronics, SIP, power electronics, industrial electronics, EMS, ODM assembly and testing. So he's our, our guy for uh, all the market overview topics. Then uh, we're gonna go on with Eric, uh, who is part of USI since uh, 2003. He currently is at the head, he's currently uh, the head of electronic packaging services engineering department. He has more than eight, 18 years under his belt uh, in assembly and quality management and process development. And as well, he focuses on power module processes development in the last nine years. And finally, we have Felix, um, who is part of Astaflash in 2007, where he started as the buyer. Uh, he gradually became procurement director for the whole Europe um, uh, region uh, in uh, 2007. And in 2016, Felix uh, became the EVP and general manager for the, of the East EMEA region. And in Astel Flash, STMA region is uh, Germany, UK, Czech Republic, and more recently, Poland. And I am Tiffany Picard, a marketing manager of Astel Flash since uh, 2017. And I'll be your host today. And we have Polly, who is marketing manager of USI, which is co-host uh, of this event. So I hope you enjoy, and once again, do not hesitate to ask questions. Thank you. Jay, you're on. Okay. So can everybody see my screen now? Yes. Okay. Okay. So good morning, good evening, uh, everybody online. Uh, thank you so much and welcome all of you to join the webinar today. And I'm Jay, I'm in charge with the market research in USI. So as the beginning of the, uh, as the beginning of the webinar today, I'm going to give you a brief market overview on the global vehicle market and the EV market and the power electronics and the power module within the EV market. Okay, let's start. So first of all, the global vehicle market. So I think everybody know that uh, in the last couple of years, uh, the global vehicle market was not really good, especially in 2019 and 2020 uh, due to the uh, economic cycle and the COVID-19. 
But Marky thinks that the 20, uh, 2020 will be expected to be the bottom of the automo automotive market. So if you look at the table below, you're going to see that uh, on the overall market actually declined a lot in uh, last year, which is 2020, around minus 17% last year. However, the recovery in the second half of this year is really strong. So uh, market believe that uh, the market will see a really strong growth for the next couple of years, especially for this year. You can see it's around a double digit recovery back in this year, especially in the North American market. Okay, so for a long term perspective, the market is expected to grow at a 5% CAGR through 2025. Okay, so this is the overall global vehicle market. So how about the EV market? I think everybody cares about the EV market the most, right? So the pure or the battery EV production outlook, if you look at uh, the total uh, number, which is uh, in even in last year, 2020, it was a bad year, right? For the uh, overall global vehicle, but you see the battery EV still have over 20% worldwide growth for this year. And it will reach it even 70% while I grow for the this end of this year. So I think uh, I would like you to remember the number uh, around 30% to 40%. It will be a long-term CAGR through 2025 uh, of the EV overall growth. 30 to 40 is a really, really strong number. Okay, so the this strong growth were driven by the uh, stricter uh, a stricter CO2 emission regulation in all the region. Okay, so it will be the all the it will be the trend for the overall EV market. Okay, so what will be the power electronics in the EV mark in the EV car? The power electronics include a main inverter, DC DC, onboard charger, or even a BMS. So for the the EV or HEV power electronics. It will grow around thirty percent. is uh, at the same level as the overall EV market, and uh, through the twenty twenty six, and it is because the due to the overall boost of the EV market, and you can see the main inverter will accounts for around seventy percent of the total power electronics market. Okay, so within the power uh, within the power electronics within the main inverter. The big, biggest pro, pro portion of the revenue of the main inverter comes from the battery EV vehicle uh, because the, the power levels in the pure EV, the battery EV, were higher than other electrification types like HEV or uh, the plug-in HEV, okay? So if we look even detail or even down more about the power electronics, what would be the power module or the power discrete market on the EV and HEV. Okay, so generally the IGBD power module are used in the traction converter, which is the main inverter and the boost converter. And the onboard charger and the DC-DC converters will mainly use the discrete package, around 90% of them are used in discrete package. Okay, so the power module are probably used in the uh, main inverter. So uh, if you look at the uh, down table, uh, the, 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 the table in the bottom, that you're going, going to see the CAGR, the, the growing rate is also around 30% to even 70% of this market uh, aligned with the overall power electronics and EV market. Okay, so based on the current technology position, silicon carbide, everybody cares about silicon carbide, right? So like silicon carbide now is more suitable for many inversion, not for uh, DC DC converter. And, also, get a nitride is in the same position now, but in the future, uh, the the full silicon carbide power module, everybody thinks you will be the main key growth driver in the EV market or in the EV power electronics market, especially in the ramping period between around twenty twenty three to twenty twenty four. This kind of time zone. Okay, so uh, to be short or to be in summary. I think uh, there's one thing you need to remember the most, which is the CAGR will be around 30 to 40% for power module or power electronics, 
align with the EV car. Okay, so this is basically the market overview market today. So I will pass the post to Eric, which is our expert. He will give you more detail about a tech, uh, about a technology of power module and power electronics in EV market. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Jay. Hello everyone, uh, my name is Eric Xie. <clears throat> it's my pleasure to introduce our electronic packaging service in electrical vehicles. First, uh, let's see the mega trend for electrical vehicle from the 2020. The automotive shipment from the uh, 75 uh, million cars and the world grows to the uh, 110 um, million cars in 2030. <clears throat> the EV car growth is certain signal in the future. So let's talk about the manufacturing ecosystem. A high voltage power distribution box to EV, then break down to the power Inverter ECU and then the power module is the key component of the power inverter. And for the USI position, uh, USI is a manufacturer not only for the power module assembly and the tester, but also uh, inverter assembly and the tester. It means uh, we provide uh, one stop shopping service to customers. For power module application, uh, here I just did breakdown and the list some example here. One is a, a motor driver and the also rear system. But for today, uh, we focus on electrical vehicle. This is the most, most of growing application for today. There are two main uh, trends in the market for power module packaging. One is the single side cooling here, and the other one is the double side cooling here. And uh, for the single side cooling, uh, which usually is uh, will have the metal base plate or the pin pin base plate attached on the module. And uh, for the double side cooling, uh, which is uh, packaging by overmolding process. And for the following pages, I would like to introduce USI power module experience capability and also a new process technology developing and the roadmap update. The last one will also have introduced the engineering capability. This is the USI power module footprint and the milestone. We start power module process developing since uh, 2012. There were a couple of packages in mass production already in following years. Example, uh, we call this one the high power module, and uh, this one and this one is the power integrate module, and uh, this one is the unfold charger power module. From this year to the next five years, we focus on the power module, which apply on uh, uh, inverter application, which is mean which is uh, the power module with the pin uh, pin base plate, yeah, like this one and this one, and also have the uh, double side cooling package here. And we also apply uh, various 
uh, port device, example like the IGBT, also silicon carbide, even the gallium nitride. This is the summary manufacturing capability in USI. Uh, we handle process from the wafer mount and the wafer saw, and then we have a capability to the epoxy type bond, solder type bond, stack type bond, and the silver sintering pressure type is under developing. And also have can do the SM service mount technology, example like the service solder printing. Post printing, multi dye bonding, post curing, vacuum sorting, solvent cleaning, and water cleaning. For interconnection, we can support gold wire and the copper wire, aluminum wire, also the aluminum ribbon bonding. And the copper clip and the metal welding is under development. For encapsulation, we can support the damp field, case stage, gel molding, deposit molding, molding process, and also sealing process. For chain and bone, we can support the SMD and the deep package. This is the product structure for the IPN, what we have experienced before, and the list is the uh, different base product. And uh, we do the solder, soft solder wire bonding. We do the soft solder uh, die attach and also do the uh, copper wire bonding. Finally, do the over molding. And this one is we call the single side post IPM. The difference with the last one is the, the, the substrate. It could be the uh, IMS or the DVC substrate. And also do the dye attach and the wire bonding on the substrate. And uh, do the different attach for the pin out. Finally, do the over molding to its post one side for heat dispensation purpose. This is the uh, uh, we call the high power module. The product structure is use use the uh, DVC, yeah, and the, so the die bond so die attached by the soldering and also do the aluminum wire bonding and have the slip attached on the sub sub and on the DVC as well and the case attached. Yeah, so this is also become the fish good like this, this photo. This is another uh, example for the uh, power module. The difference with the last one is uh, they have the, uh, two DVC uh, storing on the base frame and also do the case attach. This is this is the, the big, big old size compared with the last one. And then this is this is the, uh, the uh, we call the 16 one uh, power module, which uh, application is in the uh, inverter application. Uh, the different the, the product structure different with the last one is they all have three. 3 AMB soldering on the printing base frame. And the door also have the uh, ultras and also do the uh, ultrasonic metal welding process and also impost coating process. So let's talk about the uh, new process technology developed and the roadmap. Here is the uh, sintering process built in USI. Current status is the, we, uh, the test sample is passed the 2000 cycle thermal cycle test. And the test criteria is following the AQG 
three to four document requirement to conduct the testing for a uh, porosity and the, the SAT result is meeting the requirement. And this is for ultrasonic metal welding capability. The current status is the test sample is also past the 2000 thermal cycle testing. For the ribbon bonding, uh, uh, here we have practice is the ribbon size is about 30 by 4 meters, and the shear test results more than 10 newton. This is the process technology roadmap. The for the green one, the process which means the process already uh, used in mass production. And for the yellow one, means the process is under developing. Like uh, I just uh, uh, mentioned about the sintering process, uh, aluminum ribbon, copper clip, and the uh, um, ultrasonic welding. Also, the printing based assembly is also under developing. <coughs> and uh, for the uh, die type system and the laser bonding and the silicon carbide paper sewing is under planning. So, for the engineering capability overview, uh, Yes, uh, we have the central engineer. They have the, we have the experience for the EMC and the reliability requirement. And also can suggest automotive grade component to customer. For internal layout capability, we use the Arigo software for layout, for layout. For the thermal simulation, we use uh, uh, we use we use uh, uh, this software for simulation stress and uh, the thermal reliability simulation. We use the uh, analysis software. We also have the experience for the uh, thermal resistance measurement knowledge, and for the mechanical design, we can help customer for the housing cover harness design review. For the tester development, we have experience with the key test provider like the lens system, SPIA, to provide the automatic time for efficiency, consistent quality, consistent quality and the cost efficiencies. We also have experience for key test requirement, including the isolation test, DC and the AC test. For me mechanical engineering analysis, we have experience for the thermal analysis, die attached reliability analysis, and the, uh, wire bound joint and the ribbon bound joint simulation analysis. For validation <coughs> test, uh, we have uh, equipment in house to support aging test. So the strength, so the joint strength test, corrosion resistance test, climatics test, vibration drop and the shock test. For the EMC and the electrical test, we leverage third party in Taiwan and in China. And the last page is about the uh, uh, micro analysis. This, this is the, uh, here we uh, released uh, some uh, equipment, example like the X-ray procession, uh, CSEN, FTR, ICP, DCAP, and the SAT for your reference. That is, uh, that are usually uh, used for failure analysis and also for the press process calculation 
analysis purpose. Okay. Okay. That's all for my presentation. And the next portion, um, my colleague Alice will introduce a complete, complete EMS solution to you. Thank you. Thank you, Eric, um, for this presentation. Felix, you're on. And Eric, you got a lot of questions, so stand to the end. So, hello and welcome everybody. Um, I have the pleasure uh, to give you a little insight on our production capabilities focusing uh, the automotive market. So, AC Flash USI um, is a 7 billion uh, company. Uh, jointly, we have uh, 27 production locations all across uh, the globe, uh, 190 SMD lines, uh, and uh, 3,900 engineer. Uh, support our customers' growth across uh, the globe. Our footprint basically covers um, all the major regions. Um, we have local teams of experts that offer um, close to the customer its support uh, and focus. And we basically move uh, across uh, the globe uh, with the customer demand. We have a global mindset. Uh, as, a, as an uh, international or global team. Um, and one of our niches is that we have standardized equipment that support any transfer of production around the globe um, with a standardized um, uh, process. Um, in addition to our manufacturing um, locations, we have uh, five design center that support our customers um, in the main region. Our uh, market share is a pretty healthy one. So uh, in communication, we have approximately 30% uh, focusing on Wi-Fi, SIPs, and uh, sensors. Consumer goods, uh, a huge uh, portion of our business is wearable devices, um, but also a more classic TV monitor and uh, uh, application. We have the today in focus uh, automotive segment, and also um, we have 10% in uh, computer and storage devices. As a synergy of all the different gro groups, um, we offer uh, a global uh, presence. We can address uh, high mix, uh, low volume to high volume manufacturing um, demands for our customers in the different markets. We uh, basically have a wide range of supports uh, in regards to business model. So um, we start from simple EMS activity uh, up to joint uh, design manufacturing uh, processes with our customers. Um, from a manufacturing perspective, we offer the full scope of uh, product assembly from PCBA over box build to system assembly. Um, and in addition, we cover the mechatronics and mechanical parts um, of the design, no matter if it is technically or uh, enclosure. From a product life cycle, um, with uh, USI, AES, and AST Flash, we uh, basically uh, support from the very start uh, of the product idea in the R&D phase up to uh, co-design, prototyping, um, the full uh, mass production cycle from NPI, system and package manufacturing, and also post-production. Um, that comes uh, with a more reliable boards um, for some of the markets. Uh, there is a strong focus on, on post-production demands also uh, that we can address, as well as all the other life cycle uh, steps throughout your product demand. We have uh, a long history of automotive experience. And uh, what we are seeking for is partnerships that uh, target long-term. Um, 
we uh, want to uh, get engaged with our uh, tier one, tier two uh, customers and the OEMs um, and uh, join them in uh, supporting the uh, future challenges uh, for the EV uh, market in particular. Uh, our global footprint uh, supports that uh, in addition with worldwide logistics because uh, many of the applications do not have just one uh, world region uh, to address, but many. Um, and our global footprint uh, supports manufacturing in Asia, North America, and uh, the EMEA region. So uh, covering um, basically all the globe. To address our uh, automotive uh, needs, we basically have uh, three uh, product line. Um, the IVE powertrain telematics business unit, in addition to the EMS business unit that uh, supports mainly the manufacturing process. We have 11 dedicated excellent center for automotive industry around the globe, which you can see at the bottom. And we have uh, more than 50 happy customers uh, in that uh, market. If we come a little bit to the products we support, uh, I start with uh, traditional cars. Um, we have the powertrain. Uh, there we focus on uh, voltage regulators, uh, throttle control, um, a lot of different pump applications, uh, cooling vents uh, for the motor. When we come to body and comfort, um, we have uh, climate control um, boards, uh, wiper, um, Lighting is an important one, door systems, um, and uh, also uh, comfort seating applications. Um, for uh, the advanced driving uh, um, applications, we have parking, uh, also blind spot sensors in, in the car body, uh, coming uh, with chassis, so um, some uh, steering wheel um, module. I focus a little bit on the EV. Um, some of the um, applications are common, so like lighting, LED lighting for, for the body. Um, that's not so much a different. Um, there we also uh, address all the different body and comfort applications. But uh, when we come a little bit more to the EV specific um, applications, we have the powertrain. Uh, we learned already uh, from my colleagues, uh, some of the applications we address. We have onboard charging, uh, battery management system, traction control, um, and power distribution. Um, on the terminal side, with the HVAC systems, uh, also water uh, um, pumps for cooling, and uh, the inverter um, applications. For the telematics, um, we have uh, um, a few applications here in focus. Um, we have all around the car audio and the GPS functions in the car, um, the central uh, CPU, but also um, the displays. We have the head-up units um, that uh, we address here. The autonomous driving ECUs, um, various applications in that regards, and the Ethernet. Um, gateway uh, for communication in the car. These are some of the applications um, that we uh, have experience with, in addition with uh, further ones. Together, we basically um, cover with our footprint 11 countries on, uh, in four continents. So that uh, supports our customers' uh, demand wherever it's growing or moving um, pretty nicely. We have a pretty high flexibility in handling high mix, low volume applications, as well as uh, um, high mix, high volume uh, or medium mix um, applications, which is important for the automotive industry. With, uh, as a common group, um, we have a pretty, pretty big spend to negotiate um, components. In addition with AES, we basically uh, can also cover some of the um, demand allocation uh, towards uh, certain markets, which in the current component crisis is uh, something that not a lot of um, EMS companies can provide. 
with our engineering resource, we can support um, and enhance uh, our engineering services for our customers. Um, and last but not least, um, we have a long history of automotive experience uh, in all our four continents. Um, and we are happy to support your demands wherever you have. Um, and uh, from here, we basically are happy to answer uh, further questions um, on all the different uh, uh, speeches we have heard. Uh, Tiffany um, will moderate that. And I thank you very much for your attention. Thank you, Felix. Um, so this is uh, the conclusion to our webinar for today. Thank you for attending.